How can web technologists interested in the interface between digital footprint and environmental footprint and artists concerned with collaborative observation, mapping and intervention in the environment bring a fresh approach to citizen science and public engagement in the environment? Well, Cheryl Norley found out at the recent Futuresonic Urban Festival of Art, Music and Ideas. In urban environments, we are often insulated from both nature and the consequences of our actions. But at the recent Future Sonic Urban Festival of Art, Music and Ideas in Manchester, artists, environmentalists and scientists explored the interfaces and complex relationships between technology and our environmental footprint. The result is an exhibition of playful artworks that make visible or tangible complex statistics or issues about environmental sustainability in order to provoke and inspire everyday people. At the Cube Gallery in Manchester, potted plants are suspended from the ceiling. As people pass by or touch the plants, the small hanging garden of plants performs a kind of symphony. This whimsical interactive garden produces sound when touched by people or when it registers changes in light and heat. French artist Anais Mitten Angst calls the garden Acousma Flora because it instantly sonifies data flow and the plants act as natural sensors. When we touch plants, they react and they sing because they are very sensitive to um, uh, energy. Each body has a kind of energy. And when we touch plants, she catches her energy and she sings. In many urban areas, industry has left behind resources that are written off as toxic spills. One can strike it rich simply by prospecting these industrial areas. John Kors won the Future Sonic 2009 Art Award for his performance-based artwork. He modified old metal detectors and hydrocarbon sensors in order to detect oil in industrial areas of cities. The Urban Explorer combines a do-it-yourself aesthetic by using basic electronics to reinvigorate urban exploration and at the same time highlight our dependence on oil. It developed from an oil spill mapping project Core was working on investigating the Greenpoint Brooklyn spill where 17 million US gallons of oil and gasoline leaked into the ground. I became more interested in the fact that um, the spill happened in the late 50s. It wasn't a spill, it was a leak. And the leak continued on through the mid 80s. So we're talking 20, 25 years of continual leakage that led to a spill three times the size of Valdez. But um, they haven't been able to clean it up. Core shocks passes by as he leads a group of urban prospectors along the old canal ways of Manchester. Maybe between this crack right here, we're getting runoff from the street from uh, probably, you know, from uh, automobiles that are leaking oil or gasoline, and the rainwater's bringing it down and it's probably just running right down into this pocket right here, and it's probably accumulating uh, over the last couple of uh, months right there. Andrea Polly's audio-visual installation, Sonic Antarctica, is the result of seven weeks of field recordings, sonifications of science data and interviews with weather and climate scientists. We're at the Taylor Glacier Met Station. The recordings are from the dry valleys, some of the driest and largely relatively ice-free areas on the continent, completely devoid of vegetation. The main, dis the main thing that we're trying to do is, is monitoring long-term climate. Ruth Fenton, Arts Project Coordinator at the Science Museum in London, says artists can offer new ways of thinking about the impact of science, medicine and technology on culture and society. It presents a way of looking at such a huge topic as climate change in a far more accessible way than dry statistics. Artworks bring an experience, an expression and an interpretation. We can tackle some of those issues through artwork, I think, more effectively to some degree. And in a way, these playful artworks and games represents how the Future Sonic Festival brings together art, web technologies and citizens, all in the name of science. Cheryl Northey, Deutsche Welle Radio, Manchester.